After producing this story on the curse of ham, I did one final interview on the subject of race. It was with Scott Welch. Scott is the founder of Global Bridge Builders. It's an organization that works with companies and churches to encourage diversity. He had so many good points that I couldn't fit it into the Curse of Ham story. So as a bonus to you, I want to play highlights from our discussion. But first, a quick encouragement. Turn off your political brain for just a few minutes. Listen with an open mind. I'm Chris Sterren. This is Truce. We first talked about his upcoming book called Plantation Jesus, Race, Faith, and a New Way Forward. I asked him to explain the title. Well, really, the book uh, really centers around kind of the main idea is Plantation Jesus as a metaphor, but a, and also a personification. You know, we talk about history and Jim Crow was personification of a, of a system, you know, post-slavery. And, um, you know, which talked about the rules and the... the the new form of slavery called Jim Crow. Uh, and, and, G- and, and the way that Rick set it up is Jesus, uh, the plantation Jesus is actually a metaphor as well for people that, um, uh, for, for a system that is within the church that is more political than it is Christ Christocentric. It is more uh, ethnically focused than it is centric. It is more religious and more uh, after uh, you know, building its own kingdom and, and, you know, plantation Jesus as a metaphor sees no problem with the blending of slavery, um, the blending of politics, the blending of all these things to, you know, the blending of oppression and, and those types of things. Um, plantation Jesus, you know, juxtaposed to Jesus Christ, uh, plantation Jesus sees no problem in having all those mixed together that you can, you can actually place your your, your, your country, your denomination, your ethnicity, above all of these things, um, and, and justify it. But when you contrast that to Jesus, Christ supports something uh, diametrically opposed to plantation Jesus. Scott, how does racism show itself in Christianity today? Um, we still are very segregated among ethnic lines. Uh, we are still, you know, kind of... Uh, kind of focused on this notion of the ethnicity of Jesus as a white man, which he was not. Um, we are still very much divided in terms of along party, uh, political party lines as well. Um, that is, uh, you know, and, and as opposed to God's kingdom, uh, where room for, you know, all kinds of different things, but we tend to stop and let that be the dividing factor. Um, you know, and then it also shows up just in the, uh, the fact that uh, a denomination would have to have something brought before itself even to talk about the curse of Ham, which is both unbiblical, he, he said curse would be Canaan, first of all, um, and the fact that it would have to go through this, you know, ecclesiastical Congress to, 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 uh, to go before the board. And when, when the Bible is very clear in, 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 uh, in, with 66 books of truth there, uh, so it shows up in all different ways. It shows up in the... Uh, the colors of the gospel, which is something used for many uh, street evangelism teams, primarily white, that are where they use white as the, to be symbolic of purity and black as, as the color of sin. But knowing the Bible doesn't talk about sin as being black, it talks about it being scarlet. Um, and so it shows up in so many different ways. And it shows up in the fact, I think, and, and, you know, and I'm an independent politically anyway, and, and, uh, but it shows up in the fact that you know, when we have, uh, you know, a, a president right now that uh, can can call a, a quarterback an SOB for kneeling, and, and, and we have uh, people in attendance at his talks still in mass numbers, primarily people from the family of God, evangelicals, and supporting him and cheering him and calling him a Christian. And, uh, you know, the Bible that I read said, you know, a tree by the fruit that it bears. I just haven't really seen any fruit. But yet, and still, I honor the office and, and pray for him daily, in fact. Um, you know, and, you know, just ask that God would flood his heart with wisdom and insight and everything. But I, so it shows up in so many different ways, and it also shows up in the fact that we call America a Christian nation. There's no in the, nowhere in the Constitution that has Jesus' name in it. Um, nor can we talk and, you know, justify 400 years of slavery and call that just a, just a hiccup in history or just a having a, a bad run at trying to do the right thing. 
so this whole idea of, of, of that whole, uh, the ideology of, of Christian, myth, the myth of a Christian nation, or calling the United States a Christian nation, you know, not saying it's not an amazing nation and a, and a wonderful nation, but it certainly is not a Christian nation. We may have um, some principles, you know, that might align with it, but even when uh, they said in the Constitution, uh, the Declaration of Independence, all men are created equal. They weren't even talking about people of color, nor are they talking about women. And so we have to be honest about that. And I think the biggest thing that Plantation Jesus speaks of is to really, for Christians, to be just honest and not try to grab onto something man-made to, to grab their identity. We should be found in, in Jesus Christ. And then we start from there. Uh, right now, I think we are very much ethnocentric as the body of Christ, which puts ethnicity in the center. And then we might, and we're ethnocentric and we're Christo-conscious. I actually think that the, 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 converse, the converse of that is actually where we should be. And I think if we were there, we would actually be a lot, uh, experience a lot less hiccups amongst the family. We should be Christocentric and ethnoconscious because God doesn't have a problem being you know, creating, you know, he created us all, you know, Italians and, and, and Polish and German and African American and Latino, the Native American. But he has a problem when we put that first, because he actually uh, is, is, uh, wants to be first, and, and he should be. I know we've made mistakes in the past, um, and it's hard for us to just say a few words and make them go away. Uh, but how should churches proceed in the future? I think they can they can really um, move forward by being honest. They can move forward by modeling uh, 1 Corinthians 13 and 4, because love is associated with maturity. And so we can uh, also come from that, we can actually surmise that uh, this unity it comes from a lack of maturity. So right now we're in a very immature state as the body. Um, and I also think we could model John 17, where Jesus said, make them one. And, uh, you know, and first of all, he, he says in that chapter that he is, the Father has given us the ability to love each other as, as the Father loves Jesus. So, so it's, not a fa- it's not that we don't know. We have an unwillingness in the body to love each other as, as uh, the Father loves Jesus. And so it's a maturity issue. And it is a uh, it is a uh, love connected to maturity issue, and it and it is it's it, uh, it's an issue of idolatry. I mean, we we literally have we're bowing down to political parties and to ethnic groups and to and uh, to denominations. But nowhere in the scripture can I see that a denomination, a political party, or uh, you know, or an ethnicity ever uh, brought salvation to the world. Only Jesus did that. See, to me, the fact that we're still dealing with the curse of Ham, it demonstrates that Christians don't get their theology from the Bible. We tend to get it from popular culture and what other people say about it. To me, it's a real problem that the Southern Baptist Convention shied away from defining the theology, from, from shooting down the curse of Ham. Exactly right. And, and, and the fact in where, you know, in it, to, to, to think about the fact, to, to, to understand, you know, the, the history of that and to see that, wow, you know, uh, a denomination is, doesn't want to hear it when a denomination really was one of, you know, that was one of the de- denominations very responsible for the per- perpetuation of it. Um, and the fact that it, it's like bringing, it's like bringing uh, a debate to the floor over Santa Claus and talking about his ethnicity. Well, first of all, he's not, a, he, he's not real, right? No more than the Easter bunny is. There was a St. Nicholas, but that was a very different story. And so we, we take this myth of the curse of Ham, and we, you know, to me, you might as well put it alongside of the, the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. Um, but you see that it is much more harmful, and it justifies the hard hearts of men to bring oppression, whether the, the person that they're trying to oppress names the name of Jesus or not. And so, again, and that is Plantation Jesus. That is, that is the personification of it, to justify something that's not in the Scripture, to try to act like it is. And, uh, and, and again, that's, where, that's why I think of the bodies having so, you know, we're, we're having some of these really debates that we should have resolved a long, long time ago. And it just shows that people, don't, as you said, they don't read the Bible for themselves. They, 
They do hearsay. They hang around with people that think just like them. And they take it from even pastors or other leaders that, that, mis, that misquote uh, the Word of God, either knowingly or unknowingly. And to their credit, the Southern Baptist Convention has made some good strides. In the 1990s, they officially apologized for their behavior uh, leading up to the Civil War and the promotion of slavery. That's, that, yeah, that's, well, they, and they have actually some really good efforts now. You know, they're, I think they're really trying. And again, that, you know, that, and that's the point as well. You know, if, if, we, if, see, if we truly have a Christocentric perspective on that, the Bible demands and, and uh, tell, God commands us to forgive each other, right? It doesn't mean that we have to walk in stupidity and act like stuff never happened. But as an African American, what the Bible tells me, and if Jesus is my Lord, then he said to release them and forgive them if I am to be released and forgiven. So when you, but when I put it, when, when my identity is, is, is based on my ethnicity more so than the scripture, then my ethnicity becomes Lord and not Jesus. And so the whole idea is that if Jesus is Lord of your life, then you've got to lay down first everything else, and you have to pick up the cross. You have to pick up the Word of God, and you have to put Jesus in the center. And so the wonderful thing about having a Christocentric focus is everybody has to change. But this current idea of being ethnocentric and keeps Christo conscious, conscious people, just, uh, people don't have to change because they're obeying their own ways as opposed to obeying God's way. Scott Welch is the founder of Global Bridge Builders. His book, Plantation Jesus, which he co-wrote with his friend Rick Wilson, will be available in May of 2018. That's it for this podcast extra. For more information about the show, go to trucepodcast.com. Please remember that this podcast is listener supported. You can contribute on our site and by purchasing a copy of my novel, Cradle Robber, from your ebook store. I'm Chris Starin. This is Truce.